Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Throughout the late 80s and 90s, Chrysler needed to enhance their fuel economy, so they released the A500-518 four-speed overdrive transmissions. Uh, the 500-518 were nothing more than a Torque Flight 6, Torque Flight 8, three-speed with an overdrive section on the back. Uh, later on, they were retitled everything from a 42RH or RE up to a 48RE. The RH or RE denoted rear-wheel drive hydraulic, rear-wheel drive electric. Uh, they weren't too computer compatible. They only had a 3-4 upshift uh, lockup and an electronic governor that was controlled by the computer. Uh, but it got the job done for a while. Uh, as the time rolled on, Chrysler realized that they needed a more uh, computer-savvy transmission. So in 1999, they released the RFE family of transmissions. And when I say RFE, that meant rear wheel, fully electronic transmission. Uh, there are several models that fall under that category. The first transmission that was released in 1999 was a 45 RFE. It was a four speed. When Chrysler developed these transmissions, it was knowing that down the road that they were gonna make these into five and even six speed transmissions. So in 02, they came out with what they called a 545 RFE, which from a hardware standpoint was identical to the four speed. It was just computer strategy. Moving forward in 2012, they came out with a 65 RFE. Again, it was just computer strategy. These transmissions always had the ability of having six speeds. Uh, for a while, they used what they called second prime, which was just a different name for a second gear, whether it was upshifting or downshifting. Uh, in 07, they released a heavy-duty version of this RFE family, which was a 68 RFE, and uh, it was a more robust transmission. Planetary gear set was somewhat different. Uh, as well as the rest of the transmission capacity. And then again in 2012, they came out with a hybrid 66 RFE, which the back end was pretty much like the 68. The front end was pretty much like the 65. Uh, but those transmissions have been around for a while. Changes have occurred, as, uh, as you might expect. Uh, what we're going to focus on today are three things the pump, solenoid, and valve body areas, and we're going to cover each thing as far as the changes, modifications. So we're gonna get started, and the first thing we're gonna do is a transmission pump. As I go through these components, I'm basically gonna be covering from 99 all the way up to 2020, uh, because there are some substantial changes between these components. Yeah, I want to make sure that we're uh, uh, that they're being covered. Uh, to begin with, we're going to talk about the pump. When the uh, RFE family was first released in 1999, this was the design of it. And as you can see, it has a raised tower for the metal clad seal to go in. When the 68 RFE came out in 2007, all the pumps were changed over to this design and the metal clad seal is no longer in the pump body itself, not to mention uh, the 45 and 545, the stator support's a little shorter than the 68 RFE. There's a bushing in the uh, 45 and 545 that is not in the 68 uh, RFE, and there are some uh, other components, uh, differences as well that we'll get into. Uh, in, in addition to the pump, you have the what I call the hub cap, and this is the pump cover, has a big seal that goes around it, and the early design had a big hole and an internal seal that would just set over the pump. That was the first design. 
The second design, when they went to this style of pump, the hubcap actually has the metal clad seal in it itself. And so it would just sit on here, the converter hub would go through it. Uh, in addition to that, there are two basic diameters. The 45-545 was a different diameter than the 68 RFE, and Chrysler, bless her hearts, actually puts the name of it in. So this says 68 RFE, so, so you know which cover that you get. So this was the initial setup. And one other thing I wanted to bring your attention to, on the earlier pumps, there was a problem with what we considered cooler bypass. And there is a hole right here. And there were several changes that we'll uh, get into uh, momentarily about this cooler bypass, you know, why it was there, why it changed, and ultimately kind of went away. So these pumps on the RFE are somewhat unique because they have one drive gear, two driven gears, and how they uh, pump fluid, whether one side does it only or both sides, depends on uh, engine RPM and load and so on. So what I'm gonna do is pop this apart. And of course, I've already pulled out most of the stuff and I'm using my handy dandy uh, screwdriver to remove the one remaining bolt because there's a ton of screws in this. And the stator support itself comes out fairly easily. It's not a press in. Uh, like some other type of uh, supports might be. And the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the pump body. And as I mentioned, the, um, the pump on this is rather unique compared to other Two other type of pumps. This has a drive gear. It has two flats, uh, two lugs for the converter hub. And as this turns, your two driven gears will turn and create a, uh, a pump pressure based on RPM. There is also a little check valve in here that separates the two ca uh, cavities that you don't want to lose. If you lose that check valve, could be a problem. So always make sure that the check valve is in here. Uh, we're going to be flashing uh, close-up photos of a lot of this as we go through. The two lug went to a four lug. The gears are taller and instead of the shaft rotating with the gear, these shafts now are fixed and the gears just rotate on the shaft itself. What I want to get into is the separator plate and pump cover. In this area, this is what created what we consider a cooler bypass. That meant that oil that should go to the cooler just dumps back into the sump. And there were several changes, some in the plate itself, some in the pump cover. And for instance, I'm going to show you the um, The two styles, this is the early style that has the opening to allow that excess oil to dump into the sump if you got the wrong combination. And it ultimately went to uh, just a small orifice hole. So this area here is different between the two so that you have oil going into the cavity of the pump cover versus just a small orifice hole. And again, these will be indicated in the display. The pump cover, this is like the valve body because quite frankly, there's not many valves in the valve body itself. And this is where the changes really occurred uh, on this orifice um, issue for cooler bypass. This area 
is that open hole that I showed you previously and oil would come off of the uh, converter valve over to here and could uh, dump out. Uh, sometimes you'll have an open hole. There can even be a little check valve in here. So it's just, it's made to be open here as opposed to the earlier design that is closed and drilled. Within this pump cover, you have your normal regulator valve. You also have four different uh, torque converter valve, a switch valve, uh, a limit valve, a regulator valve, and an, accu an, an accumulator valve. Uh, these are valves that would normally be in a valve body. Chrysler chose to put them in the pump cover. Uh, ATSG uh, years ago had put together a, a pretty detailed uh, report on how this is. Uh, you also may want to look that up. And this is a 2019 pump. And as I get into the solenoid uh, differences, you'll see further what I'm talking about. But on the 2019, there were some changes made to the solenoid, which impacted the 2019 up pump, uh, especially the pump cover and valving. As far as the pump body and the pump plate, pretty much the same. What I want to draw your attention to is in this bore here. This is where actually the TCC accumulator valve would be, and there's nothing here. It's an open bore. This cooler bypass arrangement is the same as previous uh, uh, model designs. And what they did was to change the solenoid. Uh, they actually added additional solenoid and remove the accumulator valve in this body. So if you have a 2019 up, this is going to be a big thing. And again, you will be able to see this on the screen. So these are uh, some basics as far as the pumps go from the early 99 up, where it went into 2007, as well as what happened in 2019. And um, we don't have the time, but you'll see on the screen that we have exploded views of the valving. It'll show all the valves uh, for everything 2018 back, and it will show the valve differences on the 2019 up. So um, you at least have a view as to what changed and why. Basically, that covers uh, the differences in the pump assemblies. In part two, we're going to cover uh, what took place as far as the solenoid bodies as well as the valve body. So stay tuned.